Hey there, developers. Welcome back to Devly Code. Today, I've got something special for you. An easy yet powerful tutorial on how to build a stunning, professional email template using just HTML and CSS. We're going to design a responsive email that not only looks clean and polished, but also works perfectly across different email clients and devices. Let's start with a quick demo of what we're building today. You can see here that the email starts with a sleek header, featuring a logo and a view and browser link. Next, we've got this attention-grabbing hero image that takes up the full width. Then, there's a clean and centered message section with a personalized greeting and some text to engage your recipient. Below that, we've added a signature to give it a professional touch. And finally, there's a modern footer, complete with clickable social media icons and copyright details. Pretty cool, right? And the best part is, it's not just good looking, it's also responsive, meaning it works beautifully on both desktop and mobile devices. And here's the contact form we'll use to send the email. It's simple yet powerful, with fields for a name, email, subject, and message. Once submitted, this form will send the email straight to your inbox. On the left side, you'll find the admin email account, where all form details submitted by users are received. On the right side, you'll see the user email account, where users receive acknowledgement messages. By the end of this video, you'll not only have a working email template, but also a practical way to send it dynamically through your website. Let's dive in. All right, we'll start by setting up the basic structure of our email template using HTML. Next, we'll create a DIV with a class of email container inside the body to hold all the content. Inside the email container, we add a DIV with a class of header to hold the logo and a view and browser link. A tag is used for clickable elements. IMG tag inside the logo link displays the logo. A tag with class link to website provides an option to view the email in a browser. Next, we'll add a hero section for a large banner image. DIV class hero content wraps the image. IMG tag ensures the hero image is displayed prominently. Now, let's add the main content section with a greeting and a message. P tag with class title highlights the greeting. P tag below the title contains the main message. Next, we'll add a signature to personalize the email. DIV with class signature wraps the signature text. P tags are used for the closing statement and sender's name. Finally, we'll add a footer with social media links and a copyright notice. DIV class equals social container holds social media icons linked to respective profiles. DIV class equals copyright contains a copyright notice. All right, let's see how it looks so far. As you can see, we've laid out the header, hero section, message, and footer, but it's pretty basic right now. Let's move on to styling to bring it to life. We'll start with some global styles. This is like clearing the canvas before painting. You don't want any surprises from default browser styles. First, we're using the asterisk selector, which targets every single element on the page. Margin, zero gets rid of any default spacing around elements. Padding. Zero removes inner spacing. This ensures every element starts fresh. Box sizing. Border box is a lifesaver. It makes sure padding and borders are included in the element's total width and height. Trust me, it makes layouts way easier to manage. Now onto the body. Font family, sans serif, gives our email a clean, modern look. Background color, hashtag F7F7F7, adds a soft gray backdrop. It's subtle and makes the content pop. And finally, color. Number 333 sets the default text color to a dark gray. Why not black? Well, gray is easier on the eyes and feels more professional. Next, we have the email container. The heart of our template, where all the content lives. Max width, 600 pixel, is a golden rule for email design. Most email clients work best with a width of 600 pixels, so this keeps everything looking sharp. Margin, auto, centers the container horizontally. Just like magic, it's perfectly aligned. Background color, hashtag FFF, 
gives the container a crisp white background. This creates contrast with the gray body background and makes the content stand out. And finally, padding, 20 pixel, 40 pixel, adds breathing room inside the container. It ensures our text and images don't hug the edges. No one likes cramped designs, right? All right, let's move to the header, the first thing people see. The header spans the entire width with width, 100%, so it stretches across the container. Margin bottom, 5 pixel, adds a little space below it, keeping things nicely spaced out. Now, let's style the logo. Width, 45 pixel, make sure the logo is compact and doesn't dominate the header. Float, left, positions the logo on the left, giving it a classic layout. And the view and browser link, float, right, aligns it neatly to the right. Font size, 14 pixel, keeps it subtle but readable. Margin top, 25 pixel, aligns it vertically with the logo. A nice balance, don't you think? Next up, the hero image. Width, 100%, makes the image stretch across the entire container width. And height, 100%, ensures it scales proportionally without getting squished. It's big, bold, and grabs attention. Exactly what we want. Now on to the content section, where we share the main message. The title is the greeting text. Font weight, 600, makes it bold and strong. Font size, 22 pixel, gives it prominence. It's the first thing the recipient sees. Color, number 333, keeps it consistent with our default text color. And for the paragraphs, margin bottom, 15 pixel, adds space between lines, making it easier to read. Line height, 1.5, creates a nice flow for the text. Font size, 14 pixel, keeps the text readable but not too large. Text align, center, centers the text, creating a clean and balanced look. And color, gray, ensures the body text doesn't overpower the title. The signature adds a personal touch to the email. Margin bottom and margin top ensure it's spaced out from other sections. Border bottom, one pixel solid Gainsborough, adds a subtle divider beneath it. Padding bottom, 20 pixel, creates breathing room between the text and the border. Text align, center, keeps everything perfectly aligned and color, gray, matches the rest of the design for consistency. Finally, we have the footer. Social container centers the social icons using text align. Center, width, 25 pixel, keeps the icons small and neat. For the copyright section, font size, 12 pixel, makes the text subtle, keeping the focus on the main content. Margin top, 15 pixel, separates it from the social icons, and color, gray, ensures it blends into the footer. Let's style the stay in touch text directly in the HTML using inline styling. First, text align, center, ensures the text is perfectly centered in the footer. Next, we'll use font size, 22 pixel, to make it larger and more prominent. It should grab attention as the header for this section. Then, font family, cursive, adds a touch of creativity giving it a friendly and approachable vibe. Finally, margin bottom, 15 pixel, adds space below the text, creating a natural gap between it and the social icons below. With this, our stay in touch text stands out beautifully. Now that we've styled the stay in touch text, let's move on to the social icons. To make the footer look neat and visually appealing, we'll add spacing between only the first two icons using inline CSS. Here's how we'll add margin right to only the first two icons. Margin right, 10 pixel, adds spacing on the right hand side, creating a gap before the next icon. We'll repeat the same inline style for the LinkedIn icon, so it also has a 10 pixel gap to the right. For the GitHub icon, we'll skip the margin since it's the last icon in the row. You might be wondering, why use inline CSS for this? Well, Inline CSS is perfect for applying styles to individual elements when you only need to make quick adjustments. In this case, it's ideal because we only want spacing on the first two icons, not all of them. Let's take a look at our fully styled email template. Doesn't that look clean and professional? Everything is perfectly aligned, visually appealing, and fully responsive. Now, you're probably thinking, we've created the HTML template, but how do we actually send this template in an email? right? 
If you haven't watched my previous video on how to create a working contact form, check the link above or in the description below. In that video, I cover how I set up the backend for sending emails. Now, let's integrate this email template into our backend. First, copy all the HTML from the template and head to your backend. There, you should see the user HTML template. Remove the basic template and paste our newly designed one in its place. Next, in the title, you'll notice that we've hard-coded the user's name. But we want it to be dynamic, so the user's name comes from the front end. To do that, replace the hard-coded name with dollared name. This will allow the backend to pull the user's name dynamically from the front end and insert it wherever needed, like in the email subject. Finally, let's run the server and test it by sending the email. And here's the contact form we'll use to send the email. It's simple yet powerful, with fields for a name, email, subject, and message. Once submitted, this form will send the email straight to your inbox. On the left side, you'll find the admin email account, where all form details submitted by users are received. On the right side, you'll see the user email account, where users receive acknowledgement messages. That's it. We've successfully created a responsive email template, styled it beautifully, and integrated it with a backend to send emails dynamically. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to Devly Code, and check out more tutorials on the channel. See you in the next video.